Okay, so that's pretty much the gist of the session. Hopefully, you've learned a few things. Um, and hopefully this has helped you. You'll have to let me know what you guys think of this system. I'd really be interested. And uh, yeah, we're just opening the floor up to Q&A now. So if you're interested in anything else, we can I can discuss perhaps strengths and weaknesses of this system. Um, I believe a great question was um, asking if we could give the player the option to uh, edit the color of UI uh, while the game is running. Now, yes, you can, because that's the great thing, is because scriptural objects can be accessed, you can uh, you can write a method inside of the scriptural object itself to change the, the properties of it, so while it's running. Um, and because they can be updated at runtime and information can be stored in and out of them, you could write a color wheel or, or, or change theme either by writing a script that swaps the scriptural object over or actually allows them allows the player to set the colors. So if, if they don't like the green or that, or perhaps you want to add colorblind mode, you can create a colorblind uh, version of your skin uh, or something along those lines or allow the player to change a specific thing that they're not getting on with. So it's a really, really flexible system, hence why we're calling it flexible UI. Uh, and again, I can't stress this enough. This is really just a, a, a base point. I mean, already you most of you have, have added suggestions as to ways in which you think you can use this um, and go further. And one thing you've mentioned is, which I sort of touched on briefly towards the end here, is uh, if you have loads of things in here, um, it could get a bit cluttered. Now, one of the immediate fixes to that, I believe this works in scriptural objects, um, but if, you, if in your class you type in header, you can then, should be able to write then, button or a uh, flexible button perhaps here and then I think perhaps down here if we open up a public string um, text or something there I think we can then write a header here for text I have no idea if this will work uh, I'm pretty sure it does though because I'm pretty sure I've used it in scriptural objects before so let's find out when unity does its little Refresh. There we go. Yeah, so you can nicely break those up now. Again, I would say writing custom editors is even more useful. You could make an entire editor window. You could write how long I've gone carried away into writing entire editor windows uh, for changing scriptural objects and, and going into complex sort of node-based systems just to do some simple things. Avril, you're asking, will this be good for multiplayer games? No, what do you mean by that? Um, what sort of specifically th would you would you want? Uh, what are you thinking in in your multiplayer game? I guess if you're sort of wanting to change colors of UI, you could you could create a skin for each um, team member. Perhaps you have player one skin, a player two skin. That way, you don't need to create different UI. You can just create a different skin based on players. So potentially, yes, you could do that. Uh, sometimes I need to call a method that is easily available in a singleton instance, but the button lost the reference after a scene transition. For example, is scriptural object a good way to write those kind of methods? Uh, yes, actually, there's a, a really good um, Unite talk um, about scriptable objects and using them instead of singletons. I very much recommend it. Uh, Matt wrote a blog post recently called Making Cool Stuff with Scriptable Objects, which uh, we can see here. And um, it's a brilliant article. I'm going to link it in the chat in a second and it gives you a an insight into some of the great things now this is uh, ryan hippel uh, of shell games this is a brilliant talk on how to use uh, game architecture with scriptable objects um, and avoiding using singletons so if you're looking for a workaround that is definitely um, uh, something you should check so when changing the scriptable object properties in runtime does it have capability to store the new values or should we no yes it can it can store new values when you're changing them at runtime. Um, it really depends on your game and your architecture for your project um, and what you want to do there. So I, I can't sort of, because it's going to vary project to project, right? So this is, the point of this is just trying to give you an idea of what you could do, but I don't know what your game is and, and how best to do that. However, 
often you'll find that this is quite a, uh, an efficient solution to a lot of the problems that you might face. Um, so yeah, you could you could set the data to use input data such as text from named items. So for instance, if you want to set um, if you want the player to be able to input their text, let's um, let's swap the this uh, default button out and let's um, let's just quickly add a, uh, a text element in there like this. Um, uh, let's go like that. Pop that in there. We'll just hide the icon for now. Um, if we go in here, and we'll just go into our um, our button. So let's. Um, I'm just going to do this publicly um, because it's the easiest way to do it, rather than the other way I taught. Uh, I showed earlier. Um, so we'll create a variable for the text, um, and we'll assign that shortly. Um, and I'll just basically do a check because not all of them will have a ch will have text. But I'll basically say if text doesn't equal null, then we'll get the skin uh, text dot text equals skin data dot text. And so if you want to write custom code, you basically can access this skin data, and you can in your game you could have the player set the text inside of your skin data. And then if we go into, oh, we just need to go into this button and assign our text element. And then because the text element there, you see it updated because the text element inside of our skin data is, doesn't, there isn't anything there. We can go in here and then we say default button. And there you go. So yes, you can access tons of things. You can do a lot here. You just really should show you uh, what you can what you can do yeah so um i think i mentioned yes there is a i i wouldn't use uh inside here i wouldn't be using this uh normally i would write a custom editor that actually does it so i wouldn't use execute and i just i'd write a custom editor that that calls this um because you're doing this check when the game's actually playing in a bigger scale project you're doing this uh this call every time and and you don't really want to do that so it was just for the purposes of of the tutorial the demo rather than showing you how to write an entire custom editor which uh, there's plenty of uh, coverage on how to do that so i really just wanted to sort of get to the point the fastest but no this is not the most efficient way to do it i guess it, again it depends on the scale of your project it might be fine uh, but you you probably don't want to ship with that line in your in your project so uh, if you have the time to write a custom editor, um, do so. So um, I read in some places that find is, uh, yes, you shouldn't use find either. Um, again, it was just a fast way of doing something. Let's, let's fix that. The best thing to do is to um, make this. Uh, do, do, do. You could serialize field. Um, We'll keep it protected and then we don't actually need to let's comment that out for now we don't need that um it's it was a mistake that i was hoping one of you would point out <laughs> um no no it's yeah it's, it, you really it's it's definitely best um to to grab it publicly so um these already actually have a reference so there we go but um, yeah, you're probably better to public to publicly grab them. Oh, there we go. They've all now got the same. Uh, they're all using that instead. So <laughs> that's no way to go. I should not have clicked apply. It's like reflex. Uh, let's turn those back off. But as you can see, it does update. So again, it's nice and nice and easy. So let's. Um, I'm actually going to go through here and just get rid of this for now. Uh, and let's turn this icon back on. But you can see. You really can. You you can really decide what you want to do we could perhaps add another button type that's a text button i mean let's yeah let's do that so let's go in here and create a text button right and then essentially we can go case uh we'll make sure that let me go case button type dot text 
and we just go text.gameobject.setActive to be true. And we go icon.gameobject.setActive to be false. And then break. And then we'll just grab these and pop those in there. And we'll just make that one false. And this one true. And copying across here like so. Hopefully this will work. Um, I'm doing, this is based on my understanding. If we go to text, there we go. Okay, that worked, cool, great. So you can see how easy it is to just sort of jump in and make changes. And you know, now we've got an additional button type that all of our buttons can inherit from. Um, so, or, or use, so we can just make, again, we'll make this uh, button text like so. And you know, if I then go to the uh, text, it'll actually keep it. I haven't assigned any color data, so it will keep its base. So we could make it a decline button and then change it to a text. And that's how we could perhaps change the color. Um, it, it probably would be better to specifically define colors for that type of button. But um, again, you can really see how far you can go with this. We're going to using this framework to change skins for an in-game event. Uh, scene starts snowing and you want to change objects in the scene to white. Um, I mean, yeah, in theory, you could take this further than your UI. But if, yeah, if you wanted to perhaps theme your UI based on the game event, totally. Definitely do that. That's a great use of this system. You, you can, uh, you probably have to write a manager to hot swap all of the the prefabs or the all of them out so you might want to write a, a wrapper for this the uh skin data perhaps you'd have like an active skin that would be the bit that you swap if you go back to matt's scriptable object post which i showed you earlier there's actually some uh, information you can get there about how to handle scriptable objects in a way that's a bit more active during um, runtime that would probably give you more information in regards to uh even more complex theming. Again, it really does depend on your game. So, um, but I think that's probably about it. So um, we might wrap it up here if nobody's got any last minute questions. My name um, is Matt Gamble and um, I'm one of the online evangelists here at Unity. So um, if you wanna follow us, you can do via uh, Unity 3D or myself, which is Matt Gamble. Uh, Matt Shell is Matt Mirrorfish, and of course, um, Adam, uh, the Ant Ranch, is on Twitter. So hopefully that has helped give you an idea of just what you can do with all of this stuff. And um, please, please send me a tweet letting me know if you've implemented it into your project and how you've done that, because I'm super interested to see how you run away with this idea. Uh, it's something that I created entirely for my own project, and um, I, I just, as immediately as I thought of it, I wanted to share it with people. So um, I'm really curious what what you what you do outside of this. So um, yeah, best of luck, and uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll um, we'll see you again soon. Cheers.